Good morning everyone and welcome to a new video on my channel and welcome to what I hope to be the first episode of Vlogmas 2023. Um, if you're new here, my name is Ode. I'm usually coming to you from Edinburgh, but today I am in Copenhagen and I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, regarding Vlogmas, so I thought I would try and do a bit of Vlogmas this year. Uh, I'm not going to vlog every day, you're not going to get a video every day, just to, just to be clear. <laughs> My life is really not that interesting, but I have a few um, fun things planned for uh, the month of December. Well, the end of November and the month of December, they're like, related to Christmas, and so I thought I would take you along with me for these. and. My plan is to do maybe one video per week. Uh, probably not going to vlog every day, but just uh, filming bits of knitting and bits of Christmassy things. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll do my best. I'm not, um, like I've said before, I've only done one vlog, so I'm not uh, really good at it. And I'm not, I don't have uh, the practice that makes it quick and easy for me to do that. So um, yeah, I'll do my best. We'll see what comes out. and. Yeah, hopefully I can deliver on uh, my one video a week plan, and if not, then um, I'm sorry. But yeah, we're gonna start today. Like I said, today I am in Copenhagen, and so I thought my first video would be uh, me filming this little trip. Uh, I'm here because Kyle, my husband, um, uh, is here on a work trip, and so I thought I would tag along. We're here only just for a few days. Today is Thursday morning. We arrived yesterday. We were tired. I didn't film yesterday. It's just like airports and like air travel is it's not fun, is it? <laughs> it's really not fun. But yeah, we made it. And um, yeah, so it's Thursday morning today. Kyle is working uh, all day today and then tomorrow morning. But then we will have Friday afternoon and Saturday all day together. And we're flying back to Scotland on Saturday night. So I am on my own today and I am on my own tomorrow morning. My plan this morning is that I booked myself a um, walking tour of Copenhagen. I've never been before. I've never been to Denmark. I know absolutely nothing about Denmark or Copenhagen. And so I thought that was a really great way. I really enjoy, usually I do those walking tours when I go to new cities. It's run by uh, like local or people who live here and know the city well. So that's, that's always very fun. And uh, yeah, the only thing is that it's pouring rain right now. I don't have to leave for another like 45 minutes, so I'm hoping it's going to calm down, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. It's also always a great way to get uh, good recommendations of things to do. So that's the plan for this morning. And then this afternoon, I'm planning to visit a few yarn stores. And so I will take you along with me. Uh, I don't... I don't really have a lot of um, yarn shopping plans for this trip. I had some, some Danish uh, yarn brands and, and things that I wanted to get, but I am also going to Oslo next week. And I uh, realized that a lot of the yarn that I would want to get here, I can also find in Oslo and they appear to be quite a bit cheaper in Oslo. And so I don't know if it's just because Norway is cheaper than Denmark. I have been told that Denmark and Copenhagen are quite expensive, uh, generally speaking. I also wonder if it's maybe the exchange rate between the Norwegian krone and the British pounds might be better than that between the Danish currency and the British pound. So we'll see. Anyway, all that said, I'm not planning to buy a lot of yarn um, or yarn at all, really. But I was feeling a bit sad about it in a way. Not that you have to buy everywhere, but I kind of have to. I kind of like to have a little of a like a souvenir yarny thing. And so um, my plan this afternoon is to find at one of the yarn stores some, um, I think I want to get some Sennes Garn Perfect and make myself a pair of Sunday socks to knit on while I'm here. So rather than like buy yarn to knit on, like to knit when I get back home, I thought I would buy like just a couple of skeins and work on a project while I'm here. And that would be my sort of souvenir uh, project. So. Hopefully I can find that. I brought the needles that I needed with me for a pair of Sunday socks, went through the airport just fine. Uh, I know it's always, you always take chances, right? When you travel uh, with knitting, um, we don't have checked luggage. Um, so everything was with us. And yeah, I have, I brought a pair of socks um, 
right here to knit on during the trip and I have my small um, circulars and that went through just fine we went through security in Edinburgh and Edinburgh has always been just fine with knitting and then yeah like I said I had uh, needles um, to knit magic loop or like for the yarn that I want to buy today in my bag with me in my bag with me without any knitting on those needles and it also went through just fine I also have my tiny um, scissors that go through just fine so yeah Edinburgh is usually fine I've never had any issue we'll see what it's like when we leave Copenhagen but um, yeah so that is the plan for today um, like I said I don't have to leave just yet so I'm just gonna sit for a bit and knit and then I will take you along with me today and hopefully we'll have fun and hopefully the rain is gonna stop or calm down at least it's also very windy which I mean it's very similar to Scottish weather so I'm used to that but the prospect of spending um, two hours walking outside right now it's a bit daunting but fingers crossed it's gonna calm down all right I'll see you in a bit Hi guys, hi again. What a day. Um, it's the evening, as you can probably tell because it's quite dark. Um, it's been dark for hours. It is um, quarter to six in the evening and I just got back like 15 minutes ago. I spent the whole day out and about just walking around and it was raining and it was cold and I had the best day. <laughs> um, I haven't, like, I was trying to think, and I haven't traveled on my own in such a long time. I mean, I'm not on my own because Kyle is here as well, but I was on my own all day today. And I feel like it's been such a long time since I've just explored a new city that I knew nothing about um, on my own, and it was brilliant. I enjoyed it. Uh, I will have shown some footage of what I did today. So like I was saying this morning, um, I had booked a walking tour this morning and I loved it. The, wizard, the weather was the worst, but it's fine. It was raining. Like at some point I was getting soaked like through my coat. Like, and I have like a puffy, like Fjall Raven coat that is waterproof. So it was that, but I didn't care. The guide was amazing. I did with one of those, um, it's called like free walking tours. They usually have a lime green umbrella. They're around in a bunch of 
European cities. I think we have them in Edinburgh as well. And basically, yeah, it's it's that it's a free tour, um, and um, and then you can give whatever money you think it's worth at the end of the tour. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good system and. Uh, I think I've done one of those before in London and I've done this one now in Copenhagen and it was so much fun. The tour was about two and a half hours. The guide was amazing and there were quite a few people, like a lot of people considering the weather. And yeah, I had the best time. Um, it was so lovely to hear about Copenhagen. Like I said before, I know absolutely nothing about... It's, first of all, it's the first time I go to any of the Scandinavian countries. Um, I know nothing about uh, like... Scandinavian culture generally speaking that like nothing about Danish Danish culture like Copenhagen like I just I know nothing um, and so it was really fun to um, walk around the city with the guide who could like explain things to us and tell us stories he was really good at storytelling and yeah so I had the best of time I did that this morning and then um, the guy recommended uh, places to eat and uh, one of them was not too far from me, so I went and I got. I'm not. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Those like open sandwiches um, that they do here. I, yeah, I'm not going to pronounce the <laughs> the Danish word. Uh, and it was delicious. Like I really, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, eating while traveling is always a bit tricky for me because I eat uh, like mostly plant based. Um, I don't. I don't want to eat meat and then uh, like dairy. Uh, doesn't like me very much. <laughs> I get a lot of uh, stomach pain if I if I eat dairy. So um, I do eat primarily plant based. Uh, but I do want to try when I travel places. I do want to try like local bits. You know, like local food that I wouldn't find elsewhere. If 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 just once, just for the taste to see what it's like. So yeah, I had one of those open sandwiches this morning uh, or for lunch. I mean, and one of them did have a bit of like mayo in it but um it's been good like it wasn't too much if i have just a little bit i'm usually fine so i'm i'm careful and yeah that was that was really delicious i have to say it was really really delicious um and yeah and then this afternoon um i went to three yarn stores which you also will have seen footage of i went to uh tante grown or something i don't know how to pronounce it uh, I went to Knitting for Olive because, you know, kind of have to if you go to Copenhagen. Um, uh, I feel like it's the knitter's pilgrimage when in Copenhagen you have to go to Knitting for Olive. And then uh, I went to Brunsbeek, something like that. Again, my pronunciation. I, I don't know, like, I don't understand um, Danish at all. I can understand it somewhat when it's written because uh i have a little bit of german and that helps me a lot but yeah and also like everyone speaks english it's quite uh interesting because um either i guess i'm being visually identified as a tourist and so people won't talk to me in english right away or um like they start talking to me in Danish and I always say I'm, I'm sorry I, I don't speak Danish like I don't I don't want to just start blabbing in English and just take it for granted that they speak English even though I, I know that they probably do but I don't know it's a, bit, a little bit of a rant for a minute but um, like growing up in, in France um, like a lot of people a lot of tourists and usually North American tourists um, come to France, like come to visit France, and then they just speak to you in English right away, assuming that you speak English. And not as many people in France do speak English, and like I think a lot of French people really hate it. Just that assumption of not even trying to say, you know, like bonjour, and then like, do you speak English? Because a lot of French people like will still speak English and will happily switch to English for you, but just assuming that you speak English is like. It's not always pleasant, and I understand that feeling, uh, even from someone who could switch to English, no problem. Um, I understand that feeling, and so I never, I never assume whenever I go somewhere that um, the person I'm talking to is speaking English. So I usually say, you know, like I'm sorry, I don't, I don't speak your language. Do you speak English? And usually they do. And here, like people, everyone speaks English, um, so it's been fine. But anyway, rant over. Um, but yeah, so. 
I don't know, I've, I, I lost my train of thoughts. But yeah, I had the best time. I went to those yarn stores and uh, I thought I would share with you what I got. So maybe you remember, I mean, I'm sure you remember this morning when I was filming to you and talking to you, um, I said, I'm not planning on buying any yarn here. I just want to buy a couple of balls of uh, uh, Send This Perfect to make a pair of Sunday socks by Petite Nez as like a, a project that I knit on while I'm here. Right. Okay. Did you laugh when I say that? Did you laugh when I say, I'm not planning to buy any yarn. I'm just going to buy two balls. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Um, of course, I mean, I bought more yarn, like more than two balls. Like, what was I, th like, really, what was that? What was I thinking? Like, did I really think that I would come to a place, go to three yarn stores and only buy two balls of yarn. <laughs> Honestly. Um, anyway, let me show you what I got. Um, it's all good though. Um, although honestly I can't buy any more because I don't think I have the space in my suitcase. And to be fair, I didn't buy that much more. So the first store that I went to was uh, Tonto Green, Grun, I, again, don't know how to pronounce. And they did sell, um, send this perfect which i didn't think they did because they didn't have it on their website when i looked before going but it was in a, um, a sale basket and and the lady who worked who worked there explained to me that they're no longer carrying out uh, carrying it just because she said it wasn't really it's not really popular anymore or yeah so anyway they had some in the sale like the bargain bucket or whatever you want to call it. They only had, um, I needed two balls and they only had one color that they had multiple balls off. The other colors they only had one of each. So, uh, but it was, it's a really lovely color and it is, it's this yarn. I don't know if you can see. Um, obviously the color is not showing great because of the light and the darkness, but it's color uh, 3552. I think they might have names on the website, but they don't have it on the ball band. So yeah, so I got this to make myself a pair of um, Sunday socks. You need you need two balls. Each ball is 50 grams and I think you need two balls. So I got this one and I'm really happy with it. And yeah, so I did what I said I was gonna do. I got my two balls of perfect. And then near that store, like a few minutes walk away was knitting for Olive, which I went to because you have to. and. I wasn't intending to buy anything at Knitting for Olive, for Olive. Like, why? Of course I was going to buy something at Knitting for Olive. You don't go to knitting to the actual shop and not buy something. And also, believe it or not, I don't think I've ever knit in Knitting for Olive. I was thinking about that on my way there. I don't think I have never knit anything with this yarn. I have three balls of uh, their regular merino at home uh, for a summer top, but I haven't used it yet. And I was like, well, how fun would it be for me to get some knitting for olive in Denmark and and use that as the yarn, like my first time using knitting for olive. And so I was looking at the color and I saw this absolutely beautiful green. I could not resist. So I got two balls of this. I think the best color is like what shows here in the light at the top. That's the most um, accurate, I would say. It's really beautiful. The store was lovely. Um, it was very empty. It was just me. When I got here, uh, there's a couch facing the front door and there are two people uh, at either end of the couch knitting, uh, both working in the store and then just me. So I filmed a little bit, but I, I, I was feeling a bit awkward. Uh, and then a woman came in and like, they paid attention to her, they took care of her. And so I took that opportunity to film a bit more, but yeah, I'm still not the most comfortable filming when there's people around, especially if I'm the only one. And I also don't want to make anyone else uncomfortable. But anyway, I got those two uh, balls of green. It's uh, yarn, it's heavy merino, it's 125 meter per 50 grams. And I got it in the shade slate green. And it's so pretty. It's like this um, heathered, Forest green, I think it's maybe fairly similar to, um, oh, the Durerum Natura, like forest or something. It feels like it might be a somewhat similar color. And I think what I'm going to do with this is, um, what I'm going to make with this is a hat. The hat that I brought with me, let me just grab it, is, uh, this hat that I made just before I left. Uh, and this is the, 
Cordy hat by Isolde Teague and it's really nice. I really like I wore it all day today because um, it was cold and I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed knitting it too. It's one of those patterns where you uh, kind of like the muscle bro hat where you start knitting and then you figure out your gauge and then you follow instructions based on that. And I really I'm really enjoying it, uh, enjoying wearing it and I really enjoyed knitting it. So I think I'm going to make another one with that knitting for olive yarn and 100 grams should be more than enough. And then I went to third yarn store, Brunstrick, I think I would pronounce it like that, which is where I intended to go and buy the perfect in the sentence perfect in the first place. That was always my plan. I was like, I'm going to go to this store. This is where I'm going to buy it because I knew from online that they had it there and I'm not going to buy anything else anywhere else. You see, you know, but I, it was also, it was such a lovely store. It had a lot of like all of the like most of the sentences, I would say a lot of easy air as well. And I, I, I was able to have a look at the easy air tweed, which is one I've been, which is a yarn I've been kind of intrigued by for a while. And I don't really have a project for it or anything, but I was curious to look at it in person, see what it feels like and see maybe if I would want to use it in the future. And I think so. I think it's a really nice yarn, but yeah, I got only the two balls of perfect to make another. I'm going to make another pair of Sunday socks. I'll just have two pairs of Sunday socks. Uh, which I think, I mean, you can't really ever have too many um, woolly socks, can you? And uh, yeah, I got in this nice gray color. Which I like a lot, which I think will go with a lot of um, my jumpers and things, although I don't really care so much about matching my, my socks to the rest of my outfit. But yeah, they had, I don't know if they had all the colors, but they had like, they had a lot of colors. And they had a bit of hand dyed as well from a local dyer, I would say, but I didn't get any of that because I'm, I have plenty of hand dyed at home, to be honest. And um, yeah, it was, it was a really, really lovely shop in a lovely area as well. And it was a lot of fun. And then I just, yeah, after that, I just walked home. I mean, not home, I walked to our hotel um and uh yeah i thought Ka i thought i was going to be on my own tonight because kyle was supposed to have like a, a dinner thingy after his conference with all his colleagues and everything but he actually just came back to the hotel room saying that it was not as widely attended as as he thought it was going to be and he's kind of tired and didn't really want to go um like he's like me, like socializing is in like fancy or not fancy, but like big dinners with a lot of strangers is never really fun for us. Um, so yeah, so he came back to the hotel and so we're going to go have dinner together somewhere. Um, yeah, we just need to figure out where, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm just rambling here. And so I'm going to, I'm going to leave you here for now. Uh, once again, I had a really, really, really lovely day. Um, I didn't really know what to expect, but yeah, it was, it was great. I had a really good time. I'm on my own again tomorrow morning. Um, I don't know if I'll talk to you before I leave tomorrow morning. So I'm on my own again tomorrow morning. Uh, there's a couple more, more yarn stores that I would like to go to and a few places I would like to see in, um, like within walking distance of our hotel. And then Kyle's conference ends just after lunch, I think. And so we're going, like we're meeting again in the afternoon. Um, I think we have booked a cruise on the canal, which should be really nice. And then we have a nice dinner. Hopefully we'll have a nice dinner. We bought, we booked a table at a nice restaurant for tomorrow night because today is actually our fourth wedding anniversary. Um, and so we didn't think we could have dinner together tonight. So we booked something for tomorrow night, which will be very lovely, I think. But yeah, I'll take you along with me, of course, tomorrow. And um, I will talk to you at some point tomorrow, maybe not before I leave, but at some point tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good morning guys, um, 
just thought I'd say hello. Today is Friday, it's the morning and I am out and about just for a stroll, exploring more of like the harbor area. It's really lovely, it's a beautiful day, it's freezing cold but it's so sunny. And right now I'm near the harbor I think, it's really lovely, let me show you if I can. Yeah, it's really lovely. And according to my map, I should be quite close to the statue of the Little Mermaid. Um, according to the tour guide, uh, that I, um, ooh, the sun is quite bright, hold on. Uh, according to the guide of the tour that I did yesterday, it's quite an underwhelming um, <laughs> site, I guess. Apparently it's been voted um, top three of the most underwhelming art pieces or I guess like overhyped art things uh, along with um, the Mona Lisa in Paris which I have seen and I confirm it's yeah I'm not sure what all the fuss is about <laughs> it's really tiny and kind of hard to see actually and then um, and the, um, I don't know oh, I can't remember the name the little guy who um, wheezes in the fountain in Belgium uh, so that's the other two and so apparently the little mermaid is the third one so I don't know, let's, let's try and find it. I'm gonna try and find it and I'll try and show you guys. All right, we found it. Um, I guess I get why some people would find it a bit underwhelming, but I thought it was actually quite sweet. Um, yeah, it was, it was a sweet little statue and, and the, the area is absolutely lovely. I don't know why, but I really love like harbors and ports. I don't know, they always, even the like very industrial looking ones that, I don't know, I just really like them and it's it's a beautiful area. So yeah, we found the Little Mermaid. Um, I think I'm gonna walk back into the city, like closer to the center now. I'm just walking around today. I don't really have, uh, this morning, I don't really have any set plans. So um, yeah, I'm just walking around and see what I see. It's actually quite fun. Uh, Kyle is still at his conference today, uh, this morning and so we will meet um, later this afternoon for more fun activities. Good morning everyone, um, it is Saturday today, 
Um, I didn't film again last night after we got home. I just uh, got home, got to the hotel. I was just really, really tired. Uh, but you would have seen some footage of what I was up to. Mm, I find I found another yarn shop, which was really nice. Uh, I was good. I didn't buy anything. But yeah, it was a lovely store. They, I think they stocked every single Gepard yarn possible. Like they had all the bases, I think, all the colors. Um, it was lovely to be able to um, feel it, like some of them, and touch it. Like some of them are really nice. And uh, it might definitely be something that I order in the future and use. I know that uh, my ivory room stocks them in London in the UK, so I might just order it from there when I want to. But yeah, it was another lovely day and I was just really tired at the end of the day. Um, I crashed a bit, so um, yeah, but feeling much better this morning. I had a good night's sleep and we actually took the train today. It's our last day, but we took the train today and just got out of Copenhagen for a little bit. We are in Roskilde uh, and we are going to the Viking Ship Museum. And then, um, yeah, which should be really interesting. It was recommended by some of you when I asked what to do in or near Copenhagen and some friends of mine also recommended it. So uh, pretty excited to go and see what all that is about. It is a beautiful day and we're by the water. Roskilde is actually a really lovely little town. It reminds me of where my um, grandparents used to live. So that was, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of nice in that way. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say for now. I've seen on Google Maps that there is a yarn, a yarn store in the town that we're in. I don't know exactly where it is. It's in the center somewhere. So we'll see. I'm not going to go out of my way to uh, seek it, but if we walk past it or if we're nearby, then I'll definitely go and have um, a little look. But once again, not planning on buying anything. I packed my suitcase this morning and it is full, so there is no more room. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's it for now. Let's just go to the museum and see what is that's all about. I'm really interested in Viking culture and Viking ships and Viking history. Obviously growing up in France is not really something that you learn about in school so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Good morning. Um, I was just about to start unpacking and I realized that I actually never really properly concluded this video. So um, I thought I would do that now. Uh, it is Sunday morning or actually noon. <laughs> I kind of slept in. I never sleep in but I slept in until nine this morning. Um, and anyway, it is Sunday morning and so we came back last night. We came home last night and um, yeah, we were reunited with our kitties, which is always a lovely feeling when you get home and they were very happy to see us. And yeah, I thought I would just wrap up this, um, this video. Um, I don't remember the last time I talked to you. I think it was before we went into that Viking museum yesterday, which was really interesting. It was about five uh, Viking ships that they um, found in the fjord, like they'd been sunk into the fjord of Roskilde and then they excavated them and that was super interesting. And then um, we just had a walk around this little town which was really lovely. And like I said, I think it, it, like, it reminds me a little bit of the town where my grandma used to live um, and uh, in Alsace, so in the northeast of France um, and where we used to spend all our Christmases. Up until like she passed away I think five years ago now so yeah I had this a bit of a comforting vibe to it which I really loved all the like most of the houses had that really nice yellow um, like yellow walls which I, I don't know how it's made but it's really lovely and yeah it was a lovely day overall um, we didn't find I mean it's not that we didn't find that yarn shop that I mentioned it's just that uh, after the museum when I put it into Google Maps to go there I realized that it was closed already so we just went straight back to the train station and yeah we just hung out collected our suitcases from um, the hotel had one last pastry before we left 
and just flew back to um, to Edinburgh. We saw, guys, we saw the Northern Lights while we were up in the air, like in the plane. It was magnificent. It was pure magic. I've never seen the Northern Lights before. It was my first time. And just as like we were flying and just as we sort of got over Scotland or started getting over Scotland, um, the pilot um, like told us over the speakers that if we looked to the right, we would see the Northern Lights. And yeah, it was so nice. I'll pop a picture somewhere on the screen because um, I managed to get a picture um, most of the time the Northern Lights you can see them better through the lens of your camera even just like a phone camera because it captures the light a bit differently than our eyes do like when you watch them to like to the naked eye it's not as colorful and not as vibrant um, but yeah it was it was so nice I can't believe I saw the Northern Lights. It was amazing. But yeah, anyway, we're home now. And so that's going to be the end of um, this this video. Uh, just before I go, I thought I would show you what I knit on um, during my trip. So like I said in like the first day, my plan was to go and buy a couple of balls of Sadness Perfect and to um, knit on a pair of Sunday socks while I was away. It was really it was really fun. I really enjoyed doing this, like buying, going somewhere at the start of the trip, buying yarn and then casting it on and then working on that project during the trip. I think it's something that I might do again in the future. And so this is what I have right now. Obviously I didn't have as much knitting time as I do when I'm at home, but it was it was still fun. So this is just, it looks, <laughs> those socks look so weird. It's ribbed so it looks like really tiny, but yeah, you've got the cuff here and then um, this is, I did all the way until the, like the top of the heel flap. I think I, I started the heel flap just before we got on the plane. And then um, everything else I did on the plane. Uh, I'm knitting it on magic loop, which is very unusual for me. I always do my socks on um, small circulars, but, and then I switched to uh, another needle for the heel flap and gusset and then for the toes, but I didn't want to bring five million needles with me. So I thought I would do this one on magic loop. I also find that uh, for DK socks, because you cast on fewer stitches, even though the stitches are bigger because the yarn is thicker and the needles are bigger. It's sometimes a bit uh, too few stitches for the small circulars and it doesn't work as well. So um, yeah. I don't know, it's been fun. Also, I don't know what I did, but like at the end of the heel flap, or like when you join back your, and pick up your stitches, I have like two holes. I don't know if you can see like here and here. And I think it's just stitches were really loose. Um, I don't usually have that in my other socks. So I don't know what I did wrong this time. I was on the plane and it wasn't very bright and things like that. So I'll just, I'll just thread a little bit of yarn and close them up, that's fine, but yeah, I don't know what happened. It's never happened to me before, but anyway, it's been it's been fun knitting on this. Um, I'm gonna finish this maybe this weekend. Although it was, I had my scarf. I I think you saw in videos I had like a green scarf, which was fine. But I think next week we're going to Oslo, and I think I need something much warmer because it's gonna be much colder. From what we can tell, it's gonna be like minus five at the warmest. So uh, what I've been making is that. Um, I've been knitting myself a, it's called the Liebling Neck Warmer by Camille Vad, uh, in unspun yarn from U.S. Wool that I have at home. And this is the yarn that I actually used to make the hat that I was wearing um, during this trip. It's this lovely gray yarn. This is the Porty hat. I don't know if I said before by Isolde Teague. And uh, the neck warmer, I'd already made one for Kyle. Kyle was wearing it during the, um, the trip and it looks like this. It's kind of like a dicky, but it doesn't go as far down as a dicky. And yeah, I think he really enjoyed it and it was really warm for him. So I have plenty of yarn left. So I'm making one for myself as well. I'm making it a bit smaller just by going down in needle sizes. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping to finish it this over the next few days so I can have it with me uh, in Oslo because it's going to be it's going to be quite cold. Um, but yeah, I think that is all I have to say. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed filming it. Um, it's only my second vlog that I've ever made and obviously I'm not like, I'm not a professional. I'm not, I'm very inexperienced and I'm not really good at it, but I had fun 
making it, which um, I guess is the most important, and I hope you had fun watching it. Uh, this first video of Vlogmas, um, like I said, I'm not going to do one every day because, yeah, my life is not that interesting. Uh, but I am planning to do one every week, so I will see you next week. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!